so we have Bernard asking, if you have to cut a kilt at the bottom in order to shorten it, <clears throat> would it automat would you automatically hem it, or is there anything wrong with leaving it uh, as a fringe? Ian, what do you think of this one? Would you would you cut a kilt on the bottom to hem it, and or leave a fringe um, on the bottom? It's better not to. But I'm assuming we're talking about a situation where somebody's inherited or otherwise acquired a kilt after the fact. Um, if you were going to, you'd pretty much have to hem it. Leaving a fringed bottom, especially one that is cut, would would damage over time and it wouldn't hold up well to washings and things like that. Okay. I love the little poof of hair that you have on the top as well. <laughs> that is, that's much better. Thank you. That was it was d- delicious, um, <laughs> Mr. Mac. <laughs> Give him another scotch. Not this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I echo a lot of what Ian's saying there. As far as um, as far as you don't want to cut it because you, you're gonna you're gonna get that that fringe that's gonna it's gonna keep fraying out. Um, unless you want to do a whip stitch down the whole thing or a blanket stitch down the whole bottom, which then would stand out even more. Um, yeah, you, you uh, you'd have to hem it, at, and the, at the only thing then you would be my concern would be how long the fell is, because um, if it's a if it's a longer kilt and you're shortening it, that means that your much, fell yeah. was was longer. So now, instead of the pleats ending at a particular spot, for you, they may now ha- may go down longer, and now it may not have the swing that you originally had to begin with. The fell, for those who don't know is the sewn down upper portion of the kilt. So basically from the waistband to the widest part of your rear end, the sewn down section. What Mac is alluding to is that if you have somebody who is, let's say, six foot five, um, you're gonna have a nine or nine and a half inch fell. And then if you that person passes off the kilt to somebody who is five foot eight, they're going to need to hem the kilt because it's gonna be too long. The problem is the fell, the distance that it's sewn down, is meant for someone who's taller. Now, when you put it on someone who's shorter, it's going to go down past the widest part of the rear end. The reason that's a problem, when you sit down in a kilt, you're you're making your body fat and muscle move in different directions. So, basically, you're putting too much pressure on the lower on the bottom part of the fell, and what you're gonna end up with is a split seam where it's gonna pop and you're gonna have kind of a V, one pleat that I, you know, the whole stitching splits and it goes up to the top. Um, So that's what Max referring to. Would I ever cut a kilt and hem it from the bottom? No, I would just hem it. Um, A traditional kilt has a, either a tuck-in selvage or a, or a, you know, a was woven on a dob cross loom, so it's a traditional kilting selvage. So there's no reason to cut it and hem it. If you were gonna just cut it because you didn't know how to hem and it's it's a cheap kilt and you didn't care about the the over overlock stitching at the bottom, then fine. But if you're gonna actually hem a kilt, you might as well hem the freaking kilt, not just cut it. Um, would I, do I see a problem with? just cutting it and letting it fringe at the bottom, yeah, it's going to kind of, it's not going to unravel because it's not knit, but it will kind of just get ratty at the bottom over time. So I would, I would absolutely, if you have to shorten it, A, the right way to shorten it is to actually shorten it from the top um, and cut it off and, you know, do a whole lot of construction, which also, you know, incurs a lot of money. The easiest way to do it is to just hem it at the bottom of the blind stitch so that you have a two inch or so hem. Um, and I wouldn't cut it unless you had to. If you had to hem it like five inches, which is a, a, a crazy amount to hem, then then maybe, yes, you, you put it through a, a serger or an overlock machine and you actually cut off and then you, you you have stitches wrapped around the edge so it doesn't fringe, and then you hem it up two inches or so is about the ideal. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't just let it fringed at the bottom. Yeah, and, and when Rocky was saying about the uh, the blind stitcher, that's just gonna grab a couple threads. So on the front, you'll see very teeny tiny ticks uh, of uh, a thread that's pulled through that's holding that up. Uh, versus top stitching it, which you would see a line or all straight across. 
Good to know. Mm-hmm. Is this where the... the, the more yeah, now that's the more you know. And it goes up <laughs> this way, I believe. Or actually, it doesn't go in a rainbow. It goes like kind of straight up There's and off. On an angle. Indeed. Um, <clears throat> a blind stitch machine, for those of you who don't know, since we have the old Kilt Maker episode, mm-hmm. um, what that does is it has a curved needle. And it can actually, you set the depth of that curved needle so it, it goes through the top layer of fabric and just barely grabs one thread on the, the face of the fabric, which is facing down. Um, so that way when you turn it over, you don't really see any line of stitching going straight down, but you end up with little tiny tick marks about every centimeter mm-hmm. down the cloth. Um, and when you iron it from the back side, you iron it flat, those kind of disappear or dissipate at least. Um, that's what a blind stitch machine does, and that allows you to hem a kilt without having a, a full line of stitching right down the very bottom, or you know, an inch or two inches up from the bottom, um, right on the face of the fabric. Mm-hmm. 